The revised Ontario Elementary Mathematics curriculum features six strands, all of which are different and yet interconnected to ensure student success. One new inclusion is called Strand A and it emphasizes social-emotional learning skills. And this section is broken down into six different components, each of which will be discussed in this video, along with ways for teachers to incorporate them meaningfully into their mathematics lessons. Now we recognize as teachers that every day we have different personalities sitting in front of us. They are inquisitive, they are stressed out, they can bring the drama. So as a primary teacher it's important for me to name the elephant in the room and list all the different emotions that we experience. That way kids can you know, make connections to them and say, yeah, I feel mad, I don't like math sometimes, and that's okay. But we need to also recognize that there are times we need to check ourselves when we're working in a group situation and we can't always let our emotions run away with us. Two ways of addressing this is to introduce I statements, which can replace the you took my pencil, you did this, which has of course um, an accusatory tone and can escalate into greater conflict. So having kids, just by teacher modeling, encouraging them to use words such as I felt this way or I I'm sad when you did this, I didn't like when you took my marker, is more uh, conducive to a positive classroom environment. Our kids need to know that they are not alone. Sometimes they feel as if they're the only ones in the room who don't understand a question, and of course that's not the case. So creating a safe and inclusive environment for me is key. And to do that, from the first day of school, I tell the children that there are no silly questions. Now this takes some work because as a teacher, you will notice some kids will try to smirk or make faces, or they can give sidelong glances, and the kids pick up on this even though we may not always catch it. So it is, it does take some practice, but telling the kids that there are no silly questions and you will not be made fun of is key. And again, this will take some time. But also reassuring children that the questions they ask are probably amazing questions because five other kids in the room have the same questions but they were too scared to ask, that kind of give kids, gives kids more power and um, the tendency to kind of step up and take that chance, which is a powerful uh, lesson in and of itself. For the students in my class who are positive and determined, I just call them plucky because they do not let the mistakes uh, take over their lives. They laugh them off, they learn from them, and it actually drives them and fuels them to go even harder. Of course, this doesn't happen with every child and this is kind of hard to teach. So how can you impart this or kind of encourage other students to adopt this kind of behavior? What you can do is simply call out other students' behavior in a positive way. Not necessarily naming the student to embarrass them, but to say, you know, I love the way that Liam is looking over his paper right now. He's focused, he has his ruler out, he's underlining keywords, and then using him as an expert to say, Liam, did you find any keywords? And have him say, I found two. And that gives the class kind of hope that, okay, there's two there, he found them, now I'm going to take my ruler and look for them too. So just kind of giving praise points indirectly makes the child who's doing the positive behavior feel good, and also gives the kids who may not be focused yet or don't know what to do the chance to kind of uh, reorganize themselves and settle down. Our kids need to know how to be respectful and supportive of one another, especially in math class. Some kids feel very threatened if someone has the problem solved and can explain it, or you have some children who will tell people gleefully, I understand the question, I got it, I solved it, and that creates stress for other children. So speaking kindly to one another and listening to all perspectives is also important. The I statements can um, make their entrance here yet again by you know having kids say, I don't quite know how you got that answer, can you show me? And that way this will engender a greater discussion at large in the class and kids supporting one another to explain. Usually kids are really happy to be you know, helpers and supports the teacher. You can even pick certain kids who finish quickly to go around the room if that's allowed to provide some extra instruction and guidance. I find it's really good to tell kids, if you yourself had a math phobia as a child, and I did, I tell them that and they immediately kind of relax and say, really, a teacher just didn't like math, you didn't? And that kind of um, connection that you build from the get-go really makes math kind of like a shared 
a shared problem that we need to solve collectively, if you will. And so I will share my feelings about math. I, I struggled with it. I wasn't a big fan of math, but I use these strategies now and this helped me. So if you are paying attention, I will want to help you solve your problems even better. Um, doing that I find is very instructive. Also for kids to recognize that you know, they don't understand something and just call it out. Just There's no shame in that. Just say, I don't understand what I'm doing here. I, I don't get it. Can you please stop? That kind of slows the class down. It slows me down as a teacher as well to repeat things. It reminds me that maybe this needs to be retaught, shown in a different way. It's kind of synergistic in that we're all helping each other. But for kids to recognize first is an important step. And let's face it, when we're teaching explicitly, it's always not the easiest thing to spot um, kids' creativity, that is. So by giving kids a problem of the day, say first thing in the morning, or a word search, or some kind of brain puzzle, just to give them that chance to solve something on their own, and then to have them explain how they went about solving it, is pretty powerful. I found one time by giving kids a word puzzle, um, I had three different explanations. The answers were all correct, and the kids were like, I did it his way, I didn't do it her way, but that's not a bad way, or my mom taught me this way, and the conversation again starts to flow. And it's honoring all different types of problem solvers and having kids realize that, yeah, there's more than one way to attack a problem.